Hi, welcome to this short video on doing distributed processing with ACA cluster sharding and Kafka. My name is Christopher Beatty. I work on the uh, ACA team at Lightbend. I'll start by talking about the difference between stateless and stateful processing and how the most interesting scenarios are typically use stateful processing. I'll then go through what you've been able to do with ACA cluster sharding and Kafka uh, for quite some time, but then we're going to go into the more interesting thing, which is the new ACA, a new feature in ACA 2.6, which is the ability to co-locate the consumption of uh, partitions in Kafka with the actors that are going to be doing the processing. I'll then go through a demo of this and show nodes being added and nodes removing and showing the, the data processing moving around and being co-located with the uh, consumption. All of the code I'm going to show you today is going to be stepping through a sample in the ACA samples repository of which there's a link here. The scenario we're going to walk through is one of doing analytics for the users in our system. So all of the events that happen, all of the things which our users do, they're going to end up in Kafka. And we want to run some analytics that aggregate per user. And while that calculation is going on, while it's going to be a, a continuous calculation as our users do more and more things, we want to be able to expose the state of the processing in real time via gRPC. First, let's consider what this would look like if we were doing purely stateless processing. So by that, I mean that every time we process an event for a given user, we don't need to know that user's history or any form of aggregated state for that user. On the left of this slide, I'm representing a partition Kafka topic. So in this example, we've got five partitions and messages for various users on each of the partitions. On the producer side, we've made sure that events for the same user end up on the same partition so that we can produce them all in the same location and have ordering between, between events for the same user. And because we're doing stateless processing on the right here, we've just got two ACA nodes that are completely independent of each other. They haven't formed an ACA cluster. They're relying on the Kafka consumer group to divide the Kafka partitions uh, between the however many ACA nodes that we've got. Soon we'll want to do some stateful processing. And by that, I mean we're going to keep some state in memory or in a database uh, for each user so that every time we process a message for um, a user, we know what they've done previously. Uh, we might want to keep, say, a running total. How many purchases has this user made? And for that, we're going to forward each of the messages that we consume from Kafka to ACA cluster sharding. This means that there'll be an actor running inside the cluster somewhere uh, which will be doing the processing for each user. And as we create more users, more actors will be created. And as users become in inactive because they're no longer doing events or they're no longer customers, then they'll be automatically passivated and, and taken out of memory by ACA cluster sharding. A big advantage of doing the processing inside a sharded actor is we can interact with it not only from our Kafka consumption, but we can, say, offer an interface into that over gRPC or, or HTTP. So this means that in real time, while we're doing the processing, we can have queries coming into the application to see the current state. So we can serve things like the current running total of uh, purchases each user has made. To understand how this is going to work, we're going to zoom into a single ACA node. On this node, the Kafka consumer has assigned us partition 0 and 1. Uh, this can, of course, change over time as Kafka does rebalances. And um, by default, the way that uh, sharding um, assigns actors to nodes will be in no way affected by what the Kafka consumer group is up to. And in this example, we've ended up with three shards, shard 0, 2, and 3. And we've been a little bit lucky. Shard 0 and shard 2 contain two of the actors, which are going to process messages for uh, users, which we're going to consume messages for locally. But the rest of them are going to have to be sent to other nodes. The first thing we're going to do is use an extension to Alpaca Kafka, which is the library that we're going to use to consume from Kafka to plug into a, to plug in a custom message extractor into cluster sharding. A message extractor is what decides which actors, which entities, so users in this case are assigned to which shards, which in turn decides which shard exists. So the first thing we can do is match up Kafka partitions with ACA cluster shards. So now we can see that the messages for user 1, 2, and 3 end up inside shard 0. But we still end up with messages for the other partition that we're consuming, partition 1, which contains messages for users 5, 7, and 8 going to different nodes. 
We'll solve this final problem by using the external shard allocation strategy. This is a new feature in ACA 2.6. By default, shards are placed on the nodes with the fewest existing shards. But for this use case, we want to explicitly put them on the nodes that are consuming the, uh, the Kafka partitions. Integration with the external shard allocation strategy has been, has been added to Alpaca Kafka. So we'll see in the demo with one line of code, we can make all of this work together. Time for a demo from the uh, from the sample in the Aka Samples repository. We'll start with a small cluster, we'll add some more nodes, and we'll see the Kafka partitions being moved around the cluster. Let's start by having a look at the actor that we're going to run in sharding that's going to do the distributed processing. We first define the message that the actor can receive. Uh, this is the command trait here. And then we've got two instances. The first is to, to indicate that a user purchase has happened. So in that we include the product that's been purchased as well as the quantity and the price of that product. And then a query command, which is the get running total. This is the uh, ability to expose the state of the computation in real time by a gRPC or by a HTTP while we're processing all the events from Kafka. Then we've got the state. And that's just a simple case class with the total number of purchases that the user has made and the amount they've spent. The behavior is defined quite simply with, with uh, behaviors.receive message. When we receive a user purchase commands, then we acknowledge that we've received it and then update the state with the new total purchases and amount spent. The get running total command just results in the same behavior being returned, but we send the running total back. Next, we need to have a look at how we initialize sharding um, to enable all of the features that we've just discussed. So the first thing we do is create a message extractor using this Kafka cluster sharding extension uh, provided by Alpaca Kafka. We pass in a timeout because we've actually got interaction to do with Kafka. We pass in which topic that we want to look at the partitioning from and then an entity ID extractor. So this is how we map from the message type of our actor, which in this case is command, to the, ent to the entity ID. Once that feature completes, because this thing this happens asynchronously, then we do our normal shard initialization, which is what you're used to. The two additional bits are we set the external shard allocation strategy and we pass in our entity type key.name. This is because under the covers, it's using distributed data to store the information about which shard should belong where, and it's stored under the entity entity type key dot name. The other bit of information that cluster sharding needs is this message extractor, which knows about the number of the, the number of the number of partitions. That's all we need on the sharding side. Now let's have a look at what we do on the Kafka consumer side. So we use the same extension, the Kafka cluster sharding extension to get hold of a rebalance listener. A rebalance listener is what we're going to give to Alpaca Kafka that's going to listen for all of the, uh, the partition movements and then update the external shard allocation strategy. When we set up our subscription for a set of topics which are defined in the settings class, we also pass in this rebalance listener. Now, Everything is set now for uh, ACA cluster shards to move around with their, with their equivalent uh, Kafka partition. The actual stream processing is, 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 is nothing specific to this example. We start off a consumer with, a, with, an, off, with an offset context. We map a sync. Uh, future versions of this sample might end up using reliable delivery rather than map a sync. Um, we just do an ask to the shard so here we, we, we parse the message because the messages on the Kafka topic are a protobuf format. Uh, we then construct one of these user purchases events that we, we, we just saw, and we send that off to sharding. So now let's demo this in action. So I've got a number of tabs here with various different processes we're gonna run. The first we'll look at here is a helper project, uh, a Kafka module inside the sample. Which just means which just means you can run a Kafka broker. We can see here that the number of topics created, the user events topic has been created with 128 partitions. The next process that we're going to start is the processor. This is the code that we've looked at. So it will consume the messages from Kafka and it will forward them to cluster sharding. I have two panes here because I'm going to start one, see it process the messages, and then start the other. So I'll just zoom into this one pane initially, and we'll have a look at some important log lines. 
So after the application has started up, we can see a log line here from the rebalance listener. And what it's done is it's noticed that the consumer group user processing has had partitions assigned to this node. So then it's logging out that all of these partitions have been assigned to the current node. And then again, a very similar log line to say that the external shard allocation strategy has been updated. The next thing we'll look at is producing some messages before we go about adding nodes to the cluster and seeing the rebalance happening automatically. So we've got another module within the sample which will produce some messages. So let's run that now. So now we can see we're producing about a message per second. We're just sending messages to various users. The users in this example are just, just numbers. So user 16, user 78 here. So I've left this running for quite some time and now let's have a look at what the processor is doing. So the logs are spinning by here, but I'm just gonna stop them. And then let's have a look at the, the logs. So for every single message that is consumed from Kafka, we get two log lines. The first is from the Kafka consumer and then the second is from the sharded entity. So if we take a look at the latest two log lines at the bottom here, so we can see that a uh, a message for user 126 has been consumed from partition 55. The next log line is from the sharded entity. We can tell this by the ACA log source. Uh, the ACA log source includes the shard and the entity ID. So we can see that unsurprisingly user ID received uh, a message. It was they purchased some skis. They didn't produce, actually purchase any of them this time for the price 3011. But what you'll see here is that the node that has consumed the message is also the node which has received the message in sharding. And this isn't very surprising when we've got a single node. I'm now going to start a second processor. So this will join the same cluster and be part of the same Kafka consumer group. Okay, that seems to have worked. So I'll first zoom into the new node. And we can see we've got a, a similar message that we saw before from the rebalance listener, but this time it's for a, a far fewer, a far smaller number of shards. We've got our partitions. We've got 128 total partitions and shards. And previously we had one node. So the Kafka consumer group would consume all 128 partitions on a single node. But because we've added a second node to the Akka cluster and Kafka, Kafka consumer group, now each node is going to be processing 64. So the rebalancer, the rebalance listener has noticed this and the second log line has said that it's successfully updated the external shard allocation strategy that this local node will be processing these partitions. The last thing we want to confirm is that messages are only being processed locally. Uh, we don't want messages to be sent between the nodes. We want every message that's been consumed from the from from Kafka to be end up on a local Akka. So let's validate that that's happened. So let's first have a look at the log lines on the second node, and I'm just going to pause them. And we've got the same two log lines per message. And what we want to see is that the message for the consuming the message from Kafka is always followed by a local log line saying that message has been posted by a sharded actor but on this node. And if we look at the last couple here, let's look at this last one. It's for user ID 176 at the bottom here in shard or partition 54. And then we can see it's actually been processed locally. So that shard we know is here because we're receiving log lines for, for that shard. If we go over to the other node, our original node, which is on the left here, I'll just zoom in. It's also still receiving messages, and I'll just pause the log lines here. And we can see that a message has been consumed for user 177 at the bottom here for in partition and shard 111. And we can see again that that actor is running locally. And again, we know this because the log lines are only coming out locally for each sharded actor on each node. That's everything I'm going to show you in this video. If you want to take it further, the sample includes an extensive readme for instructions of how to run the various modules. It also includes some extras like how to interact with ACA management to see that the, which shards uh, belong where. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video about ACA cluster sharding with Kafka. I hope you enjoyed it.